Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the new Tracks window added with Bannon Box 2024 for Mac. In this video, I'll go through everything you need to know about the Tracks window, and then I'll end it with a clip from the Bannon Box 2024 for Mac new features video, where I use the Tracks view while working on a song. There will be a link in the comments to that full video where you'll also be able to check out all of the other great new features in Band in a Box 2024 for Mac. So first of all, I'll show you two ways to actually get into the Tracks view. First of all, you can click here on Views and then just click on the Tracks button. And the other way is to go to the Window menu and select Tracks window. This gives you a tracks window similar to the tracks view in other DAWs, and this allows for lossless manipulation of tracks in a familiar environment. So I'll start off by showing you some ways to navigate this window. First of all, you can zoom either with the mouse and scroll wheel, or you can use the plus and minus buttons up in this area here. So I'll start with these buttons. These ones here, the minus and the plus button, affect the zoom of the waveforms here. You can do the same thing by simply having your cursor in this area and then use the scroll wheel down to zoom in or the scroll wheel up to zoom out. Now, as I do that, not only the waveform here changes, but you'll also notice that this ruler area up here changes as well. The further out you zoom, the less detail you get here, and the more you zoom in, the more detail you get. For example, if I'm zoomed quite far in like this, I can see the chords in every bar. I can also see the bar lines indicated by these larger lines and the beat lines indicated by these smaller lines. And the numbers here indicate the bar number. So this is bar one. There's an A part marker on it, which means it's a new section, or in this case, it's the beginning of the song. And then you'll see the number in brackets here indicates what chorus you're on. So this is bar one, chorus one, and it's the start of a new A section. But if I zoom out, and then I click here further along, and zoom in there, I can see this now is bar 17. It's also the start of a new A section, but it's the second chorus. So this is the second time through the full 32 bar form. Now I'll go back to these plus minus buttons here. Now these change the height of the tracks. You can see now I'm clicking the minus sign and the tracks are getting smaller. Now that can also be done by holding the command button down and using the mouse scroll wheel with the mouse over top of the labels here. The width of the tracks can be changed by moving your mouse to the right edge of the tracks, then clicking and holding and dragging it in either direction. Now, if you're familiar with the Band in a Box mixer, you'll notice that these tracks here are very similar to the mixer. And everything you can do in there, you can do here as well. You can adjust levels using the sliders for volume, panning, reverb, also, any of these values can be changed by clicking on the number itself, holding and dragging up or down. And you can also right click on these and just enter a value on your keyboard. Now this last number here is tone and there's no fader for that visible, but you can click and hold on the number and then just drag your mouse down to lower it or up to increase it. And same with the others, you can just control click or right click and enter a new value. And also similar to the mixer, you can click and hold on any of these track labels, drag them to the drag drop area, let go, and it will create an audio or a MIDI file depending on where you dropped it. You could now put Band in a Box into DAW plugin mode and then drag that green label into a DAW where it would then import the wave into that DAW. Now this button here toggles it from regular mode, which we're viewing now, to edit mode. And now you'll notice that on all of these tracks, there are now boxes drawn around various segments. Each of these boxes is called a phrase, 
And that represents the material that Ban in a Box has pieced together for this song based on the chord progression. Now I'll zoom into an area here so that we can examine some of these in more detail. So I can click on this segment to select it, and now there are various things that I could do. If I move my mouse up to the top, you'll see a new green bar has appeared there. That allows me to move this segment. So I can move it ahead or behind. And I'll use Command Z to undo that so that it puts it back where it was. If I move my mouse to the beginning or the end, I can adjust the start or end points of this phrase without affecting the actual position of the audio within it. But again, I will just undo all of those steps. And another thing you can do is, again, if I move my mouse to one of the left or right edges, but then I move it up, it then changes to this icon, which puts it in loop mode. If I now drag this, you'll see a dotted green line there indicating that this phrase is now being looped. And if I let go, you can see that is now extending all the way to here with this phrase looping at these points. Now, I showed you before that I can click and drag this and put it wherever I want, but I'll just undo that. Now, if I turn the snap option on, like so, then if I do the same thing, it will be snapping to the grid. So you can see I can no longer slide it anywhere. It is now locked into basically a 16th note grid here. Another thing you can do is select a track and press select whole, and that will select the entire track. Another thing you can do is select a region and then use this button to loop that region. And finally, in this area, if you're zoomed in, like I am here, you can press this button to zoom out to view the entire track. And the last thing I'll show you is the settings button here. There are various settings here with options for the way that phrases fade into one another. And there's also an option here to set the color for the waveforms in the tracks. You can now see that those colors are green. So now we're gonna to cut to a clip from the Ban in a Box 2024 for Mac long new features video, where we show you some of the features in the tracks window being used in a real world situation. These phrase segments give you a visual representation of the phrases put together by Ban in a Box to make up this particular performance. And these phrases can be edited. For example, I'll zoom in here. And this phrase here on the drum track represents what's being played between bars 17 and 22. And let me just listen to that there. So there was a little drum fill at the end of this phrase, and then it started with a crash to start this new phrase off here. So what I'm gonna do is move my mouse to the right side of this, and as I do that, you see the icon changes to this icon with an arrow pointing left and right. So what I'm gonna do is click and drag that, and let it go right around here. And I'll zoom into that area again. Now, I have Snap currently selected, but I'm gonna turn that off because I wanna have more control over exactly where the end of this phrase is uh, that I'm setting. So I'll put it right here just before that new drum hit there. So I'll zoom out again a little bit. And let me start just before there now. So we now heard just the crash at the beginning of that phrase, but because I've shortened it now, the drums cut out at that point. 
Now I'm going to zoom out again and we can see the drums come back in here but there's a new section here at bar 25. So maybe I'll delete this one as well. So just clicking on the entire thing, I'll press delete. So drums will come back here and we'll play a little fill to lead into bar 25 there. But if I zoom into that even more here, actually I'm gonna change one of the settings here. I'm gonna go into settings and I'm going to set it to zoom into the edit cursor rather than the mouse pointer. So now that I've clicked on here, my mouse can be anywhere and if I zoom, it's going to snap to this point here. So now here was the segment I was looking at and let me just play it here. So I'm going to shorten this a little bit so that it starts right here. So it's still gonna play the fill, but it's not gonna just start playing right at the beginning of the bar line there. All right, so I'll zoom out again. So there you go, I've edited these phrases, so we still hear the beginning of this section right here on the drums, but just a quick crash. And then we hear the fill at the end that's gonna lead back into it. So the drums are just taking a little break for eight bars there. So that was kind of cool, and now I'm thinking maybe I might want to do the same kind of thing with some of the other instruments. I'm loving the bass part, so I'm going to leave the bass just going all the way through there. But on the Guitar One track here, we have a baritone guitar. So I'm just going to take out some of the phrases in there. Maybe I'll take it out for four bars. So if I just click here, that phrase lasts for one bar, so I'll just delete it. I'll delete the second bar, third bar, and the fourth bar. Actually, I'm going to zoom into the fourth bar here, and maybe I'll have it come in at maybe this note here. It'll start playing and then lead back into there. So let me hear how that sounds now. Yeah, that was kind of cool. I think though, I'd, I want it to be even more sparse in this part. So I'm just gonna take out all of these rhythm guitar parts here. Maybe here I'll zoom in and have it come back, have the rhythm guitar come back at the same time the drums are coming back there. Yeah, that's kind of cool there. Okay, and and I'm thinking maybe I want to try the same thing with these horns. So the horn section real track here is horn section, background, R&B, funky, three part. And that's the real track that was generated for this song. But I'm using the real track stems feature so that even though they were all generated together and are playing basically the same arrangement, I have them all on separate tracks. So that gives me a lot more opportunities for editing the parts. So for example, when those drums come out, I was thinking maybe I would have just the berry sax and the trumpet play together without the tenor sax, just to make it a little more sparse. So this is the trumpet, so I'll leave that. But on the tenor sax track, I'm gonna pull this back. So it just plays the first note here of this little phrase here but then the tenor is going to cut out and the trumpet and the berry will continue. I'll just zoom out again a little bit here and I'll take out this entire section here still for the tenor and maybe I'll let the tenor come back here. This will actually be kind of cool. If you look at these phrases here, the trumpet and the tenor are now playing together and it looks like the berry sax is playing some low notes just after those hits. So that actually might be kind of cool. So let me see how that sounds. All right, yeah, that was a neat little section there. So now I wanna do something else with the drums for these last eight bars here. 
I was thinking to give it more of a powerful ending, I would have the drums play a crash every two bars. And the way I was going to do that is to use the looping feature with these phrases. So, first of all, I turned off snap earlier, but I'm going to turn snap back on. Because with the loops, I want them to loop exactly at the bar lines. So I'm going to zoom in here again. And make sure this segment is starting right at the bar line. And then I'm going to bring the end of it and have it end here at exactly bar 35. And once I start looping this, I think I'm going to have it go all the way to the last bar before the ending. So I'll shorten that one. Now I'm going to go back to this phrase again. Now, I showed you earlier that when I move my mouse over the end of this, it has that icon that's a left and a right arrow. But if I move it up to the top of this, you can see the icon changes to this, and this is now the looping icon. So if I click and drag this, you can see now it's put this dotted green line here and here, indicating that that is now the point where this two-bar phrase is actually looping. So the crash that occurs here at the beginning of it will now occur here as well and here as well. Let me just zoom out again, and now I'll bring this and continue that loop all the way to here. Now that it's in loop mode, I don't have to have my mouse near the top. I can have it here. Once it's in loop mode, it stays in loop mode like this. So let me hear just that now. Okay, so now let's just listen to the whole edited part, starting with the area where I pulled out some phrases to create a bit of a breakdown, and going to the end with the looping of the crashes on the drum track. Thank you. 